In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to use the ChatGPT app on Windows 11. If you're new here, my name's Aldo and I do work at Microsoft, but I also love making videos to help people use their computers better. With that being said, the first thing you wanna do is launch your Microsoft Store. And on the left-hand side, there is a little icon called the AI Hub. We're gonna go over to this guy. Here, you can actually see a range of different AI applications you can download for your Windows 11 PC. Of course, if you don't have the option of the AI AI Hub, simply search in the top option, Chat GPT, and you'll also find the app here as well. What you wanna do is select on the app, either in the AI Hub or just by searching for it, and simply select on Install. As soon as the application has installed, you will find it in your Start menu as a recently included application, or you can simply open it from the Microsoft Store. We can go ahead and close out of the store as well. As the application launches, what you'll see here is that you have the option of either logging in or signing up for free. I'm gonna select on log in. It's gonna go over to the ChatGPT website. You're just gonna sign in with your account. Then you get this pop-up saying, do you wanna open the ChatGPT app? We're gonna select on open, and then it will launch the application. We can close the web browser now. The first really cool thing I wanna show you is in the top right-hand corner next to your profile, there is a outline of a chat bubble. If we select on this, this turns on temporary chat. Think of temporary chat like incognito mode where you can ask it any sort of question and it's not gonna remember, it's not gonna be saved in the history, it's not going to affect any of your data, but for safety purposes, they may keep a copy of it for up to 30 days. Let's give this a go. Here I've just asked that when would I use temporary chat and it gives you a few options when you're asking something like a random question. If you're asking it, say a sensitive or a private topic, could be testing it out, or you just don't want it saved to your profile. What you'll see here is that when we get out of temporary chat, it's not stored in the left-hand side. You cannot go back to this later. Now, let's jump into an overview of the ChatGPT app. What you see here is the ChatGPT app, and the first thing I wanna show you is actually a very cool shortcut. If you select on your profile photo and you go over to the settings, you see here under the app section, there is a companion Windows hotkey to press Alt and Spacebar to quickly launch the app. I'll show you what that looks like now. So if I close ChatGPT, but I press Alt Spacebar, it'll quickly launch it for me and I can start typing or speaking straight into ChatGPT. But let's go ahead and open that full application up because I want to give you a nice walkthrough of the app. On the left-hand side, you have access to things like your new chat, as well as your searching your previous chats. The library allows you to see all the um, images that you've made within ChatGPT. You can also access Sora in a range of gif different GPTs. There are so many in here that we're not gonna go through it today, but I would recommend spending some time in here. Uh, of course, down the bottom, you can choose to upgrade your plan if you wanted to. And at the top of this section, you can choose to either close or maximize your sidebar. In the top right hand corner, you do have your profile. If we open this up, you actually see a lot of options here as well. Um, the first one is of course, to upgrade your plan if you want to pay for a ChatGPT plan. Uh, but then of course, if we open up the customize ChatGPT section, this is really cool. So you could actually tell ChatGPT to give you a name. I'm gonna say, AJ, uh, what do you do? I'm gonna say a content Creator, uh, and this will help personalize ChatGPT's responses to you. You can give ChatGPT a range of different traits. Uh, traits. You could ask it to be more encouraging. You could make it want to be uh, talk like a Gen Z member. You could tell it things like, "Give me actionable insights when it gives you your responses." Um, and then, of course, down the bottom, is there anything else ChatGPT should know about you? You can add things like your interests, your values and preferences, or things you should just keep in mind when um, when giving your responses. If you select on the advanced option, you can also choose to turn on or off some of the chat GPT capabilities, like the ability to search the web, add code, canvas, and the advanced voice. Um, but it's a great place to customize chat GPT to the way you like it. Then you go ahead and hit save, and it saves those preferences for your future chats. Let's go ahead and launch back in to the um, settings in the top right hand corner. This time, instead of customizing, we are gonna go into our settings sections. Uh, and from here, there are a few things that you can personalize and change. You can ask it to auto detect or you can tell it your language. Um, you can manage your chat, archive or delete all of them. If you wanted to log out of the application, you can hit the log out key. Under the app section, you can of course change some 
things like the system theme. Um, you can, of course, adjust the size of the text and you can turn on or customize that hotkey. If you select on it, it'll say recording and maybe I want it to be Alt full stop. Next time I press Alt full stop, it will launch the companion Windows hotkey. I'm gonna default that back to Alt space bar though, but you can customize this, it's really cool. Under the personalization section, um, you can add custom instructions and turn on memory. There is the speech option. So you can, of course, again, choose your main language. You can also choose different voices for ChatGPT. You can access the data controls. You can access data controls from here. You can export the data. You can choose to import, uh, improve the model for everyone. You could turn on or off voice recordings. You can really control the level of data that you give to ChatGPT. Your profiles like LinkedIn, GitHub, Twitter, or X, um, you could add in a domain. Um, so you can really customize this. And you can also manage your secure sign in with ChatGPT. I haven't done this yet. Uh, and then of course you have the security. So you can turn on options like enabling multi-factor authentication. And you can also tell it to log out of all your devices if you think you've logged in somewhere and you forgot to log out. Uh, but there's a lot in the settings section of this application. Now let's get into actually using it. I think by now most people know that you can type a question into ChatGPT and get a response. But what I wanna show you is the tools section here. So you can choose to make it create an image, write quote, uh, code, search the web. You can use the run deeper research, which because this is the free version, I only get five turns, or you can ask it to think for longer. But what I wanna show you is I'm gonna press the plus button and I'm actually just gonna grab a screenshot of my screen. It's gonna minimize. And let's just drop in this screenshot. Um, really doesn't mean much, it's just a collection of all my photos, but I'm gonna say, turn this into a cool wallpaper. Um, essentially you, and provide a description of the image. So I've asked it to turn this into a cool wallpaper using that image generation. And I've asked it to give me a description of that image. What's gonna happen here is that ChatGPT is going to look at the context. It's gonna give us a description as well as uh, use its AI to turn this from basically a snapshot of Windows into a very cool wallpaper. What you'll see here is that you can actually jump around to different chats, um, but that chat is still working on the left-hand side. So here's one I did earlier where I took a photo and I said, make this a cool profile photo. And it's um, updated just a little bit for me, right? Uh, but you can see here, it's now working away on what we've just done. The way I did this one here was very similarly, I pressed the plus button. Then I, instead of saying, um, take a screenshot, I said, take a photo instead. You can of course also add photos and files straight into ChatGPT. While this guy works on it, give it a couple seconds or a minute, let's go ahead and start a brand new chat. So hopefully you see, you can actually do a bit more multitasking here where you've got it running on one thing. And then while it does that, we can go to a brand new chat. This time I'm gonna ask it a question with dictate. The first time you use dictate, it's gonna ask if you wanna let it use your microphone. So you're gonna say yes to that. Hey ChatGPT, can you give me a breakdown of the different ways I can interact with ChatGPT? Can you tailor this for a student that wants to use this for educational purposes, but make it a really easy and simple way to understand as if you're gonna teach it to someone that isn't very tech savvy. So the dictate option allows you to talk instead of type into ChatGPT. And what you can see here is that it also adds punctuation as well. From here, you can simply select on the answer and hit send. And this is gonna load it up into ChatGPT. What you would have noticed before is we um, told ChatGPT to call me AJ, and that is how it greets me. It says, absolutely, AJ. And then what you can see here is it's broken it down really super simply for us. Now, I'm not gonna go through the answer here, but I am gonna show you a cool few uh, things at the bottom of it. You can, of course, choose to copy. So you can copy it from ChatGPT and paste it somewhere else. You can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you liked or you didn't like that response. You can choose to read the answer aloud. If you wanna hear ChatGPT talk back to you. Absolutely, I. You can, of course, edit this 
in Canvas. Um, and I'm not gonna go too deep into Canvas, but this allows you to basically build upon this answer. Um, you can continue asking ChatGPT prompts. You can go ahead and make any edits you want to this. I think Canvas needs its own video um, because there's a lot you can do here. So I'm gonna X out of this for now, but just to show you that it is really powerful. Uh, I'm not gonna save the chat because I just basically mash the keyboard. Um, and then of course you can switch modes of response. So you can have it on uh, G, uh, GPT 4.0, which is great for most tasks, or you can even use some of the more advanced or the mini uh, GPTs as well. If you wanted to regenerate this with a different GPT, I'm just gonna basically move to 04 mini and this is gonna give me a different chat response. So you do have even different ways of getting ChatGPT to give you answers or having it rewrite the answers that it has given you. And you can he see here straight away, this is a much more um, formal and a much more scripted response. Uh, it is using a lot more bullet points. It is a lot less interactive. Um, and this is more, I guess, matter of fact in terms of it's just given us the core answer. Um, but still really, really powerful. Down the bottom here, because we've created two different versions here with the models, you can of course jump back and forth. The first one here, to me this looks so much nicer. It is a much simpler response. Um, it uses uh, text a lot better. It's, it's got a bit more bolding. It's given just a few examples. It's got emojis there to break everything down. If we jump forward though, to the other response. You see here, it provides a lot more detail, um, but it also looks a lot more, I guess, black and white. It looks a little bit more boring and formal. While it's been doing this, it has actually created that new video on the left-hand side. There was a little blue icon showing us that this was ready. Um, and it's, you know, this turned into a cool wallpaper and provided a description. Um, I sort of think it missed the mark on this. This just created I think a cool wallpaper, but it didn't really use the image that we gave it. Um, we can ask it to try again, or we can go ahead and share or download this image if we wanted to. You could give it a thumbs up or a dislike, saying that um, it didn't fully follow the instructions, and I'll go ahead and submit that back to ChatGPT. Now I wanna go on the new search option one more time. I do wanna call out that as you highlight and hover over things, it shows you the keyboard shortcut. So if you wanted to start a new chat or search your, lib uh, your, search your chats or go to the library, um, you can use the keyboard shortcuts as well. So in ChatGPT, you have the option of dictate, but there's also this option of using a voice mode, which we're gonna turn on right now. So it's gonna give us a sneak peek at the advanced voice mode. Um, so it gives you a free monthly preview uh, it uses natural conversation and it is personalized to you. And of course, you can control all of this in your settings. I'm gonna select on continue. The first thing I'm gonna do is uh, pick a voice. Hi there, nice to meet you. I'm excited to help. Hey, I'm ready to hit. Hey, what's up? Hey there, I've got a. Let's go ahead and choose Juniper. Uh, do you wanna let ChatGPT use our camera? We're gonna select on yes. And we need to give it access to our network. Just for this video, I've, I've muted myself for now. Uh, but what you can do here is have natural voice conversations with chat. No worries, Aj. I can hear you now. What can I help with today? You can have natural voice conversations with chat GPT. I think voice is going to be the next way that we really interact with AI. Um, and let's go ahead and give this a go. Hey, Juniper, could you give me a detailed overview of how I could work with you? The pros and the cons of using a tool like chat, uh, chat GPT uh, in the voice section. Absolutely, Aj. Here's a breakdown of how you can work with me and some pros and cons so of using a voice tool. I just interrupt you for a second? Uh, you pronounce my name AJ. It's almost like two letters, uh, not Aj. So could you try saying my name again, please? Of course, AJ. Let me break it down for you. How can I help? So what you guys saw then, I'm just gonna X out of this for now, is that um, you can tell ChatGPT and it will learn as you give it answer. It seems like it learns. Um, and then of course, what you get is a bit of a transcript when you're done. Um, so here is our voice chat. It tells you how long you were speaking for. You can go ahead and replay that. Um, you can go ahead and edit in Canvas or copy that text. Um, but voice interaction with ChatGPT is a really easy way of um, interacting with the AI model. And it's a really 
natural conversational flow. Uh, it means you're not always having to type in with your keyboard and your mouse. So when we signed in to ChatGPT on this uh, computer for the first time in this account, we didn't have anything in our library. Now that we've actually generated a few images, we can select on the library option, and then we can see all of the images that we have created in ChatGPT, where you can simply uh, share or download them. You can also use the search option to search through all of your chats. When you're using the search, you do need to know what you are after. Um, so if I look at the ChatGPT, instructions because that's what I was after it didn't quite find that so you do need to know some of the words that you were talking about um, in this example we do know it was chat GPT for students but if I forgot what it was called I can always hover over any of my chats select on the ellipses the three dots and I can choose to share rename archive or delete I'm gonna rename this to chat GPT instructions so next time I use ChatGPT, if I want to search for it, or even if I just want to rename it so it's easy for me to find, it's something that I've called it and not what ChatGPT automatically named it. And there you go. That is how you can download and use the ChatGPT app on Windows 11. Of course, if you like this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you want to supercharge your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.